hey everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing really well today it's time to film an updated beauty empties video so in here is everything from beauty skincare hair care and some makeup bits as well all of the items i finished over the past six months or so so i'm going to go through everything that's in this basket and give you mini reviews on all of the products I'm surrounded by so many empty products right now, I don't know where to start. So let's go for skincare first. First up, Balm Cleansers, and this is the one that I finished most recently. This is the Olivana Soothing Seed Oils Cleansing Balm. I really liked this. And actually, as I finished it quite recently, it does still have quite a bit of a scent there. This has that spa-like scent, which is actually quite lovely, quite relaxing. If you don't like strong scents though, I don't think you will like this. It really depends if you like scented skincare or not. I found this to be really relaxing and I actually love Olivana as a brand. I think they do really beautiful skincare products. Next up, we have the YSL Top Secrets Universal Makeup Remover. This was another makeup balm, makeup removing balm or like cleansing balm, I should say. This was very strongly scented, but a very luxurious scent, as you would expect from YSL Beauty, in my opinion. But again, if you don't love scented skincare products, I have a feeling you may not like this. I, however, really liked it, and it was the first time I used any sort of skincare from YSL. Actually, maybe not skincare. I do think I've used some of their serums in the past, but it was the first time I used this skincare product from YSL, and I was pleasantly surprised. I also finished up the Decree by Dr. AJ Sternum Light Cleanse, which is a morning cleanser. This is a very light and milky sort of makeup remover, so a really nice one for the morning. I should have called this a cleanser, not so much a makeup remover. It's nice, but it's very expensive, and honestly, the fact that it's so expensive kind of puts me off this, and I don't think I would recommend this. Like, yes, I enjoyed using it, of course, but I wouldn't run out to repurchase this. I'm not rushing out to buy this again. It's just too expensive in my opinion. Next up from Biosense, this is their Squalene and Amino Aloe Gentle Cleanser. This lasted me such a long time. I have been using this for ages. I used it over the summer and I've used it in the winter and I did like this. It felt more like a face wash as opposed to a cleanser. Personally, I like the cleansing experience to feel like quite a luxurious one where my products are quite like thick and creamy and with this it just felt a bit more like a face wash type thing. Another cleanser next, this time from Aveeno and this was their Calm and Restore for Sensitive Skin Nourishing Oat Cleanser. This was a new launch for 2023 and one that I loved. I actually used a lot of products in this range. I think a few may have featured in my earlier empty so six months ago around July time it should have been so definitely check out that video if you want to see my thoughts on the rest of the Aveeno Calm and Restore collection but this was lovely I used it daytime and also as a second cleanse or evening cleanse and I would definitely use it again a couple of micellar waters next both from Nivea I'll start off with the Nivea Micellar Air Skin Breathe Micellar Water 3-in-1 makeup remover for sensitive skin this was great. As far as micellar waters go, I really don't think you can go wrong with a micellar water. Micellar water number two, also Nivea, but this is their double effect waterproof eye makeup remover. I love this stuff. I've been repurchasing it for years. It's really inexpensive. You can get it at the drugstore for pretty cheap. Sometimes they're on three for two at Boots as well, which is always really good if you want to stock up. I use waterproof mascara most days when I use mascara and this stuff gets it all out of my lashes, which is fantastic. Eye cream next, and I have just one in my empties. This is the Ren Brightening Dark Circle Eye Cream. I say this a lot in my empties because I do make a conscious effort to use eye cream as part of my skincare routine. However, I just don't know if it does anything. Like, genuinely, I've never used an eye cream and noticed, like, wow, what an incredible difference this product has made to my skin or to my under eyes. I've never really had that with an eye cream, but I do try and make it a part of my skincare routine, but... It's one of those products that I don't really know if it does anything. Like, this was nice, but I wouldn't say it particularly brightened my under eyes at all, to be honest. So, would I rush to repurchase this? Probably not. I also have a painfully expensive eyelash serum. This is the Revitalash... I don't know, it's all gone, but it's essentially an eyelash serum to promote 
healthy lash growth. I used this for a while. Again, it's one of those products that I think you really need to use religiously, like every single day for you to notice a difference. I wasn't using it religiously. Unfortunately, this definitely still has product in there, but I've had this for just so long. And where it's to be applied on your eye area, I always tend to be a little bit more cautious with that because I don't want to get like any infections or anything like that. So this has sadly got to go. It was so expensive doubt I will repurchase. Serums and oils next. This is from Youth to the People and this is their Triple Peptide and Cactus Oasis Serum. I really liked this. I actually was very surprised by how much I liked this because I sort of started using it without any high hopes I suppose. I thought it could just be like the brand and actually it's not that great and I haven't tried a lot from Youth to the People so I really didn't know what to expect but I loved this. I used it daytime, evening and I just thought it was really great. Hyaluronic acid so great at hydrating and adding in hydration to the skin which was so perfect throughout the cold winter months. It would be great for now as well actually and I really enjoyed this. From Garnier this is the Hyaluronic Aloe Replumping Super Serum with 3% hyaluronic acid. Again, thoroughly enjoyed using this. I think I really like serums with hyaluronic acid in them. I just think my skin really enjoys them and I enjoy using them as well. This was a great one that I used over the summer months and I would definitely repurchase. From Caudalie, this is an OG skincare product. This is the Vino Perfect Radiance Serum Complexion Correcting Honestly, if ever my skin is having a flare-up or if I'm noticing, mostly on my chin area is where I will usually get blemishes and flare-ups. I use this for like a week, two weeks, and it goes. It's so good. This summer, actually, I used this all summer long because I just didn't want to have any breakouts whilst on holiday and it was so good. It was really good at keeping any breakouts at bay. It's just a little pot of magic, honestly. Next up on the empties front, this is from Charlotte Tilbury and this is the Collagen Super Fusion Facial Oil. I was using this wrong. So I filmed a skincare routine video where I used this product and essentially I was using it before moisturizer and then a few people commented saying that actually oil should be the last step in your routine. Otherwise the oil prevents the moisturizer from actually sinking into your skin, which makes so much sense because when I was using it, I just didn't think it was doing much. I just felt like it was an extra step in my routine, not really noticing much from it. However, since posting that video and since using this after moisturizer, I actually would say I noticed a difference with this, which is kind of crazy because when products are a bit more on the pricier side, I'm always cautious to say it's great because I'm aware that it's pricey, but I really enjoyed using this. As far as facial oils go, this one from Charlotte Tilbury was definitely one of my faves that I've ever used. Probably the only one I've actually finished. Then from Sculpted by Amy, this is the Hydra Glow Hydrating Serum. This was another really great serum. Thoroughly enjoyed using this. I also really liked the packaging of this. I just find it, I don't know, really satisfying to use. But this was lovely. I actually had like two inserts of this, so I've gone through two of these. I, don't, I can't seem to find the other insert, but I definitely have gone through this twice or two of these I should say and I loved it definitely would use again I have one lone lip balm in here this is the keep I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced but I will leave it linked down below this is the apricot lip balm this was quite nice the scent is beautiful that's what really really drew me to this I absolutely love how it smells it was a bit like very creamy but almost in a like it almost felt a little bit oily on the lips so I didn't love using this it definitely wasn't my favorite lip balm to use but the scent is unreal a couple of face masks have also made it into my empties this is the skin proud sleep hero overnight sleep mask I really liked this firstly the smell oh my gosh this smells like strawberry yogurt or raspberry yogurt it smells so nice really fruity really fresh this was very light so worked really nicely as an overnight mask because essentially you put this on it doesn't feel too heavy on the skin it really just drinks this up and i really enjoyed using this then from wake this was their it just says face mask but it was a pink 
clay sort of face mask. I didn't love this, you know. I don't love clay face masks. I find them a bit too, like, harsh on my skin, particularly when it comes to taking them off. I find myself rubbing a little bit too much on my skin, so I don't love them. Doubt I would repurchase this, to be honest. I have quite a lot of moisturizers in front of me, and I'm finding it kind of crazy that I got through these in six months, but sometimes I feel like my boyfriend ends up using them as well, and they all end up finishing up much quicker than usual. So first up, CeraVe. This is a brand that both me and my boyfriend really love using. This is the Facial Moisturizing Lotion. This is actually the evening one, so to be honest with you, I don't think you have to exclusively use this in the evening by no means. I just think that usually nighttime moisturizers are that little bit thicker because they are sort of designed to last all night, I guess. But that's the only difference I find with them. I definitely use this daytime as well, not evening exclusive. Loved this. As I said, both me and my boyfriend really enjoy using this. And CeraVe is just one of those brands loved by everyone. So much so that I also have a CeraVe moisturizing lotion in here as as well now this is obviously much bigger in size and actually we use this one mostly as a skin so on our body as opposed to face I don't know why but I always feel that for my face I like to use moisturizers that are specifically formulated for the face because I feel like your face has much more sensitive skin so you want something less thick I guess so this was a great one for the body from honest beauty I finished up the daily calm lightweight moisturizer really enjoyed using this and I really enjoy this packaging because when you don't have to sort of dig your fingers through it I actually find it quite nice to use and I really liked this I would definitely use it again from face theory this is the Amil C whip SPF 30 so this I really enjoyed because it has SPF 30 in there and any makeup or skincare products with added SPF always get a tick in my eyes because it just makes life that little bit easier yes you should still apply SPF over this but it's always good when it's got an addition of SPF SPF. This was nice. I didn't love the scent of this though. It was very, very orange scented, but quite an artificial orange scent. So I didn't love using this purely down to the scent. From Bare Minerals, this is the Smoothness Bare Haven Soft Moisturizer. This was nice, quite a lightweight moisturizer, nothing to write home about, but nice. From Olivana, I also used up the Intense Repair Night Cream. I do like using night cream specifically in my nighttime routine, just because I find that they are heavier usually, and I quite like that when going to bed to feel like I've put my skincare on, if that makes sense. I really like to make it be known that my skincare has been done. And this was a really nice product. Again, Olivana, a brand and I've recently discovered and really like. From Kelsey, I finished up the Midnight Reset Overnight Sleeping Balm. I wasn't entirely sure how to use this product, if I should be using it more as a mask or if I should be using it more as a moisturizer. So I kind of used it as both. I used it as a moisturizer in the evenings, but I applied quite a lot and I guess it became more of an overnight mask for me and I enjoyed using this, very luxurious. From Elemis, I finished up the Pro Collagen Marine Cream. Now this isn't necessarily formulated for my age group. I do think in a couple of years, this will be fantastic for me, but right now, it's not the best for my skin. However, I do still love using it. I just love Elemis as a brand. I think their skincare is so luxurious and just so beautiful to use. But this is probably a product not necessarily aimed at me right now, but one I still love to use. And then from Cordially, I recently finished up, literally this morning, the Vino Perfect Instant Brightening Moisturizer. This is the daytime one. It's really lightweight on the skin, so I think it sits really beautifully under makeup which is great for daytime and I really like this I would definitely use it again I also used up the Garnier sensitive advanced UV face fluid with SPF 50 plus this is great all year round we need to be wearing SPF all year round to prevent wrinkles and obviously further diseases as well but I really like this one I think it's very much a dupe for La Roche-Posay but at a fraction of the price and in my opinion 
better. On to hair care next, I've made a conscious effort to use more hair care and to just take care of my hair a little bit more. So there's a fair few amount of products in here compared to other empties videos. So first up, shampoo and conditioner. This is the Hask Tea Tree Oil and Rosemary Invigorating Shampoo and Conditioner Duo. I actually really like the shampoos and conditioner from this brand. I've tried a fair amount of products from them and I really do enjoy using them. This was nice. I mean, it doesn't necessarily claim to do anything groundbreaking. It was a nice shampoo and conditioner. From L'Oreal Elvive, this is the Hydra Hyaluronic Moisture Locking Shampoo and Conditioner. I believe this was a 2023 launch from L'Oreal Elvive and I love it. I don't know about you, but in my house growing up, a staple in the shower has always been the red L'Oreal Elvive bottles, which are for color protect. My mum uses that shampoo and conditioner pretty much religiously. So finding the L'Oreal LV Hyaluronic version, I knew that I was going to love it and I really did. It did not disappoint. Also from the L'Oreal LV Hyaluronic collection, this is their 2% Moisture Plump Serum. I would use this as a spritz all over my hair after washing. I really don't know if that's the correct way to use this, but as it was a serum, it definitely felt like more of a leave-in product for me. So that's how I would use it. Once I had washed my hair, I would spritz this all over and then leave to towel dry for a moment and I really enjoyed using this again when I would repurchase. Also from L'Oreal Elvive and again another 2023 launch if I'm not mistaken this is the Bond Repair Rescue Pre-Shampoo. I really liked using this surprisingly because I do have to admit that I think pre-shampoos and like leave-in conditioners things like that sometimes I just find them to be a bit of a faff but I really enjoyed using this and I actually have another in my shower ready and waiting to go. Any type of hair care is incomplete without some dry shampoo so this is the Batiste dry shampoo. This is in the edgy and romantic tempt scent. They do different scents from time to time but Batiste it's such a good dry shampoo. Easily accessible at the drugstore and really affordable too. From Sunbum this was their protecting heat protector hair care like spritz bottle. This was nice but not incredible. I wouldn't rush out to repurchase this. This smells so much like all sun bum products to be honest with you. Their sun care and SPF products all have such a distinctive smell and this had that exact same smell which made me a little sad using this in the winter because it always made me think back to summer but this was just okay. It was sort of like a mix of oils so you had to shake this before applying and it was okay but not my favourite. Then from Percy and Reed, this is the I Need a Hero Wonder Balm Hair Primer. Really enjoyed using this just on my ends before blow drying. I feel like it works quite well to keep away some frizz. I have a lot of baby hairs. I feel like my hair is just constantly growing and usually I end up with a slight bit of a mohawk on the top here. So I've been using products like this to try and tame everything and to keep my hair feeling fresh for longer and I really enjoyed using this. I thought I would also include my gummies from Hum in here. These are the Hair Sweet Hair for Stronger Healthier Hair Vegan Berry Gummy Hearts. I've used these before, I'm sure they featured in empties before and they're great. I love using them. They're tasty, they're sweet and they're a good gummy so if they're doing some good for my hair at the same time I'm more than happy to use them. Let's keep things in the bathroom and moving on to some of my shower slash bath favorites. So from Soap and Glory, this is the Clean On Me Shower Gel. Love this, it's a great one for everyone to use. It's got a pump, so really efficient and great to use in the shower. I don't know how much I can rave about a shower gel, to be honest with you, but we really do like this one. Then from Zeclior, this is such a bougie shower gel. This is their Neroli Bath and Shower Gel, and the scent of this was incredible, absolutely loved it. It was just really fresh and refreshing. So a great one to use for a morning shower because the scent is just so uplifting, but definitely expensive. Do I think you need to spend a lot of money on a shower gel? Probably not, but is the experience a nicer one? 
definitely. From L'Occitane, this was their Amber Vanilla Scent Shower Cream. It was a limited edition product. I believe it was a QVC exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. Again, a really nice shower gel to use. It's got a pump, making it even easier to use in the shower, and the vanilla scent was lovely. Also from L'Occitane, this is the Sensitive Skin with 5% Shea Shower Cream. This was a nice, definitely creamier shower gel. So where sometimes the shower gel can be a bit more of like a, a wash sort of gel consistency, this was definitely more of a cream, definitely milkier, and I can see why it's much better for sensitive skin. I personally do don't have sensitive skin, but I still really enjoyed using this and felt like my skin was so smooth afterwards. Then a mini from Molten Brown. This is the Fiery Pink Pepper Bath and Shower Gel. I actually love keeping minis like these because they're great for bubble baths. Honestly, the Molten Brown baths and shower gels are so good at creating amazing bubbles. So I really love saving these for my bubble baths. And the Fiery Pink Pepper is a fairly new scent release from them and one that I love. From Sanctuary, this is their de-stress bath salts with magnesium. These were really nice. We do actually really enjoy using bath salts in our baths from time to time, and these from Sanctuary were nice. It's great to find bath salts that are somewhat inexpensive, I suppose, and Sanctuary is a brand that really filled the brief perfectly. Then from Evolve Organic Beauty, these are constantly popping up in my empties videos because they're just so good. These are the Silent Night Bathing Salts. The scent, oh my gosh, I always try to describe the scent, but I can never do it justice. When you use these, your house will be filled with this scent. It's so relaxing and so calming. It's really incredible. Even the fact that they come in this nice glass jar makes it really nice in your bathroom. And I do always love an aesthetically pleasing product as well. Next up, hand soaps. And I never know if these are interesting enough to include in my beauty empties, but I really love fun finding new scents because I feel like particularly with a hand soap and hand gels people are using them around your house so it's quite nice to know what people like. So we used up two recently. The first from The Body Shop. This is the Lemon Purifying Hand Wash. This was lovely actually and it really does have a strong lemon scent. They are so good at their scents and fragrance products. I really enjoyed this. And then from L'Occitane this was the Hands and Body Vanilla Bouquet Liquid soap. Now, as I said, we did actually use this as hand cream rather than body wash, but I like these L'Occitane bottles because I just think they look really luxurious around the house. And of course, L'Occitane unreal in terms of how they work and their scents as well. I really do love and rate L'Occitane hand liquid soaps. I'm going to have them all around the house. Then from Soap and Glory, a hand food. This is a staple in our household. We always have hand creams dotted around the house and this one is probably one of the faves. From Let's Sanitize, this is a mini hand sanitizer. I actually keep one of these in the car and one in my handbag as well, literally at all times. This is the Oud Blanc gel and it's it's very nice, but very, very strongly scented. I guess because it's Oud, and Oud is known for being a really overpowering, strong scent, and you definitely get that with these. Finally, onto makeup empties. It's quite hard to finish makeup products, at least for me. I definitely find myself starting a lot of makeup products at one go, and never really finishing anything. However, I do have a fair selection of empties to go through on the makeup front this time, so hopefully it will be enjoyable. So I'm going to start off with a brow tint. This is the Schwarzkopf Brow Tint in Dark Brown. I've spoken about this so many times. I've even filmed a video of me using these and showing how I tint my brows at home. This is such a game changer in my opinion. Just so good. If you don't tint your brows at home already or if you're a little bit scared about it, definitely give it a try because it could not be easier and this brow tint from Schwarzkopf is my favorite. And let's keep going with the brows in that case. I have quite a few brow empties actually. First up from Authored, this is the brow gel in the shade dark brown. This was nice, however, I will be honest, I've had this for quite some time and just hadn't got round to using it and when I did finally get round to using it, it was quite frankly dried up and that's a little bit disappointing to be honest because I find that with products like these, if you open them and leave them open for a while, yes, that tends to happen, but I hadn't opened this 
ever. I hadn't used it ever and I really didn't get a lot of use out of it unfortunately but I did like it and I do think it was a product that I would enjoy had I been able to fully test it out. Unfortunately I wasn't able to so I feel like my review is kind of neutral. And then I have two of the Beauty Pie Archology Eyebrow Sculpting Gels. I have one in clear and one in hot coffee. These are great. I particularly love the tinted one which is hot coffee. I felt like it was such a good match when I'd freshly tinted my brows and didn't feel the need to pencil them in. Going for a tinted brow gel was always my go-to and hot coffee is such a good colour match in my opinion. Really loved it. The clear was nice as well but I just didn't find it had the greatest hold and the greatest staying power for my brows when I'm using a clear brow gel. I like it to be a brow gel that really keeps my brow hairs in place all day long whereas when I use a tinted brow gel I want something that offers a good colour payoff and I found the hot coffee was fantastic for that. And then from Too Faced this is the pomade in a pencil brow shaper and filler in the shade dark brown so a spoolie on one end and then the other end has of course the pencil one thing I will say though the packaging is just a little bit too extra and I do get it I get the idea of having like fun makeup packaging but it's just not the most practical like for instance if you look at the actual size of the pencil in terms of what you actually need adding on the lids I mean the top lid in particular just makes it so much bigger and so much bulkier to fit into a makeup bag and I know that that's just a small pet peeve on my behalf but just something I'd mention. I also got through an Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. This was a very nice primer. Hourglass is possibly one of my favourite makeup brands in terms of high-end makeup brands. I just think all their products are so luxurious and just so beautiful as well. They are expensive obviously but I do think worth it actually. I really really love Hourglass products and this was beautiful to use. Which leads me on to one of my favourite discoveries of lip products from Hourglass. This is just incredible. I actually don't know what this is called but it's the shade Mist and these are insane. They're pretty much always sold out and they're just so nice. I'm so sad this is finished. I was so so sad to finish this. I do still have I think four other shades but Mist was definitely my favourite because it's a very like pinky, nudey colour, so a great like your lips but better. Loved popping this over some of my favourite lipsticks, but even worn on its own. I think it was just so beautiful. Really, really creamy and just so beautiful on the lips. From Urban Decay, an all-nighter setting spray. Now this is a mini, so fairly quick and easy to use up, but I do have a few bigger options on the go at the moment, and this is just really good. I've actually found myself using setting sprays far more than I used to, and Urban Decay's all-nighter setting spray is my go-to. Last, but by no means least, I have quite a few of mascara empties to go for, and I'm smiling because I had such a good year of mascara discoveries this year. It was really, really good on the mascara front. But I'll start off with the ones that didn't quite hit the mark for me. So first up from Ico, this is the Black Magic Mascara Drama and Curl. No curl in this for me, unfortunately. It isn't a waterproof mascara though, so that is partly the reason. I mean, for me to achieve a curl with my lashes, I typically always use a waterproof mascara but when a mascara advertises curl I always do like to give it a go so I did try this it was fine not my favorite it's got a very messy tube because it was quite a messy mascara to use admittedly but I wouldn't rush out to repurchase or reuse this then from Too Faced this is the better than sex waterproof mascara the Too Faced waterproof mascara is one of the most popular mascaras I think like everywhere everybody knows about Too Faced better than sex mascara. The waterproof version is nice however I just don't think this gives the desired effect for my lashes. It definitely adds volume to my lashes but it doesn't add any length so the waterproof version not worth it. From YSL this is the Lash Clash Mascara and actually let me show you the wand of this mascara because it is ginormous. It's such a big wand and it's actually really big bulky packaging as well but this was really nice. I didn't expect to think much of this mascara admittedly but I really really did enjoy using it. Now don't get me wrong it's not holding a curl, it's not doing anything like that for my lashes but on more relaxed makeup days or if I want to do like a natural makeup look 
I found myself reaching for this so much. It's only in here because I've had it open definitely much longer than I should have. And with mascaras, you do need to be careful. You can only really have them open for like three to four months really, and then it's time to bin them. So I really enjoyed using this and I'm actually sad to be parting with it, but it was a very nice mascara. But my next two mascara empties are winners of 2024. I am so impressed with both of these mascara discoveries. So let me start off with the Lancome Lash Idol in Waterproof. I actually, featured this mascara in my 2023 yearly makeup favorites because it was that good. I didn't expect much from this mascara admittedly because I have tried the non-waterproof version and I didn't feel like it did much for my lashes. It didn't really deliver. However, the waterproof version definitely delivered. Loved this so much. Used it all summer long. Actually opened a new one when I filmed my 2023 favorites again. So I've been reunited with this and it's just really, really really good. I cannot recommend it enough. I was so impressed. And my most recent empties, which is actually what I'm wearing today, this is the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational Waterproof. I heard so many people raving about this mascara when it first launched, but unfortunately, if it's not waterproof, it's not really for me. So I'm not even sure if I tried the original version of this, but when it came out in waterproof, I was pretty quick to get this to give it a go. And I love it. I'm so impressed with it. As I said, I'm wearing it now. It does exactly what I want a mascara to do. It keeps my lashes curled all day long, looking really long as well. And I'm just, I love it. Such a good one, such a good year of mascara discoveries. So that's an updated empties for you. Six months of beauty, skincare, hair care, and makeup products that I have used up. I'm now going to recycle all of these. There are schemes in boot stores where you can recycle your makeup empties. Some things you can also recycle with your household recycling as well. So definitely worth looking into the best way to dispose of your used makeup and beauty products. A big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all next week in my new video. Bye!